Is your mindset getting in the way of your ability to make healthy changes? You might have this all or nothing mindset that is stopping you from improving your health, even though you really want to. Today, I'm going to share three quick examples and we'll see if anything sounds familiar. Hey there, welcome to Be Well With Steph, the podcast, the show for women who know that personal wellness can be an actively pursued goal and who are ready to tackle building healthier daily habits with a little bit of good humor, a little bit of grace, and a lot of coffee. I'm Steph Jenko, your holistic nutrition coach and your host, and I'm here to help empower you to create and maintain a healthy lifestyle you love, a lifestyle that gives you the strength energy, and confidence to go after your wildest dreams. Scenario number one, the guilty eater. You see food as either good for you or bad for you, with very little in between. When you eat one of those bad foods like chips or cookies, you might say things to yourself like, Well, heck, I already ruined today. I'll order pizza and we'll try again tomorrow. Eating anything fun or comforting might make you say things like, well, I've fallen off the wagon or I really messed up this weekend. And suddenly it feels difficult to climb back on the wagon. Maybe you go a week or two with zero sugar, zero oil, all fresh produce, small portions. Until you go to that football party on Sunday and the floodgates open, and now you can't stop snacking, and you go home mad at yourself. Does this feel familiar? Do you feel like a guilty eater? Then I have mindset shift number one. Utilize the gray area. Foods aren't good or bad, and they're not tied to our self-worth by any means. Some foods offer us more nutritional value than others, But that's a sliding scale, and there is room for all kinds of food in a balanced diet. Sometimes we make decisions based on convenience, based on the situation that we're in, if it's a social setting, if we're in a hurry, if we are sick, and that's okay. Sometimes we want to eat a veggie stir fry for lunch and chocolate for dessert, and sometimes we want pizza, but we reduce the cheese a little bit and we add a side salad. There's room in a healthy diet for us to make both nourishing and delicious choices without any guilt. And one delicious or fun choice doesn't ruin anything and there is no wagon to fall off of. What is this, the Oregon Trail? Scenario number two, the overwhelmed by healthy. You know what healthy habits are, but the idea of developing them feels really overwhelming. You'd exercise, but you're having trouble carving out 45 minutes a day for that workout that you like to do or that three-mile walk, so you just skip it. You hear the idea that eating more plant foods could improve your health, but you're a steak and eggs kind of person. And don't get me started on cheese platters. And you don't think you could ever give these up, so you just write off the idea of being plant-based. Other thoughts that pop up might be, well, I don't have time for healthy food prep, or learning healthy eating is too overwhelming, or I just don't really like healthy foods. And these thoughts get in the way of making changes. That leads me to mindset shift number two. Tiny habits make a really big impact. Maybe you don't have time for a 45-minute walk, but could you find 10 minutes? Could you go up and down your stairs 10 times? Could you play in the yard with your kids? Or could you park in the back of the parking lot and hike to the store? All of those movements would add up to a really big physical impact. You already cook dinner or eat dinner of some kind. Could you add in a vegetable or one more vegetable? If you do that every day for a week, suddenly you've had seven more servings of vegetables. Add a piece of fruit to your breakfast And you've had seven servings of fruit, too. If you aren't at the place of wanting to give anything up or if big changes feel too dramatic or too scary, 
Start from the place of adding one new thing. Scenario number three, the self-doubter. Setting goals is for other people. Changing habits for other people. I'm not really the goal setter type, you know? I like to go with the flow. Maybe your self-talk's a little different and it's something like, making changes is hard and I'm in a really fragile place. I don't think you understand my story and I can't do anything else. Maybe it sounds like, well, I've tried making healthy changes before and that didn't work, so I don't think I'm going to be able to do it now either. I don't have dedication or self-control or fill in the blank. I am too busy or tired or stressed or depressed or anxious or fill in the blank to make a healthy change full of self-doubt. Mindset shift number three, it's time now to decide that you are worthy and capable of good health. I see you. I see that it's hard. And I know that change is hard. That digging up motivation to go on when you don't feel like you have any is hard. I think I understand it much more than you probably realize. Just because you haven't traditionally been a habit-changing type of person doesn't mean that you can't be one now. You're allowed to grow. You are allowed to decide that in this scenario, you would like to show up as a different version of yourself. Go back to those mindset shifts one and two, the idea that you can utilize the gray area, the idea that tiny habits make a big impact, And remember, the changes that you start with can be tiny, and they might feel really insignificant at first, but I promise you they will add up oh so fast. There are tools to help you. There are coaches to help you. Hi, hello, my name is Steph. There are friends. There are online communities. There are books to read and podcasts to listen to. First, though, you have to start to change the way that you are talking to and about yourself that might be blocking your ability to make these changes. You have to decide that healthy changes will be of value to your life, that they will support your mental health and bring you clarity, that they'll improve your physical health, that they'll boost your energy, that they will boost your confidence. You have to decide that these changes will be valuable and that you, my dear, are worthy of having those effects. You are worthy of feeling good, and you are capable of making healthy changes, one tiny step at a time. so much for listening to Be Well with Steph, the podcast. When there are a million things that you could be doing, I appreciate your choosing to hang out here. And I am proud of you for continuing to work on your own wellness journey. I invite you to head over to bewellwithstuff.com for the details from this episode, my blog, upcoming events, and lots of other resources. If you enjoyed today's show, I'd love to hear from you. I'm Be Well With Steph everywhere you like to hang out on social media, so come on over and say hi. Until next time, my friends, be well. well.